Yesterday, I launched my model rocket, which I've been working on for over a year now. This is its second launch and its first successful flight. Before I go into analysing how the rocket performed, I'll go over how this thing works and how I've got to this stage. This rocket is built from scratch out of cardboard body tubes and 3D printed parts. It has no fins and is instead actively controlled by gimbling its rocket motors, in other words, by using thrust control. I first 3D printed a mechanism for doing this, which neatly fits inside the rocket's airframe. I then designed a flight computer PCB from scratch, which features a large array of sensors for gathering orientation and position data, and a powerful microcontroller for doing all of the processing. This computer is designed to use the data it gathers to steer the rocket by commanding the TVC gimbal. Once assembled, I began work on the software that would run on the flight computer. This process took several months and many, many hours of debugging, as I wrote device drivers, sensor fusion algorithms, control systems, and even a wireless radio protocol for communicating with my laptop. If you want a more in-depth overview of the computer and its firmware, check out my video from a few months ago. I realised that my rocket needs quite a sophisticated launch pad to get the job done, so I 3D printed one capable of igniting rocket motors, clamping and releasing the rocket, and of course displaying the countdown. I performed an igniter test in December last year. In January of this year, I launched my rocket for the first time. Unfortunately, this flight took a turn for the worse and only reached a height of 3 meters due to a bug in my code. This gave me a chance to review my rocket software and I gradually went about fixing small issues and tweaking my code. To test some of my changes without committing to another launch attempt, I printed a gimbal that the rocket could be fixed to while its engines fired. Annoyingly, only one motor lit due to an igniter failure, but I could still validate my MATLAB simulation with the data I collected. I then performed another igniter test which confirmed that the launch pad worked properly ahead of my next flight attempt. So now we get to this most recent launch, which reached a height of 60 meters and was successfully recovered with a parachute deployed by my flight computer. Both rocket motors are ignited simultaneously at T-0 and the clamps release at T plus 0.2 seconds. The rocket lifts off and begins its ascent, and although it does drift from above the launch pad, I think that, that mostly came down to the wind at the launch site. The motors then burn out and the nose cone and parachutes are ejected at apogee. The chute inflates at T plus 10 seconds, about 35 metres above the ground. You may have noticed that at the beginning of the flight, just after liftoff, the rocket violently pitches over before correcting itself after reaching about 10 degrees. To understand why this happened, I'll show you some of the data gathered by my flight computer. You are now looking at the commanded TVC angles which control where the thrust is pointing. So there is this huge spike in the TVC angle commanded by the flight computer, which is what kicks the rocket in the wrong direction. I'm fairly sure that this is due to the way that I initialised my PID controller in code. I set the previous error term to zero, which means that my first derivative calculation is going to be way off. Essentially, the so-called derivative is calculated by taking the change in input since the last PID update and dividing it by the time that has passed. Since the previous input is zero, the change in input will be very large for the first iteration, causing this large output. I fixed this now and I'll be doing some tests to make sure this problem is fixed. Another issue with this flight was the roll rate. By the end of the flight, the rocket was really going at it. This is because I disabled the reaction wheel in the rocket, which is designed to sort of exchange angular momentum with the vehicle to keep it from spinning. I disabled this so I could validate the other systems on the rocket first, but now that I've done this, I'll turn it on for the next flight. At the end of the video for my previous launch, I mentioned that I was working on a Kármán filter designed to estimate the rocket's position and velocity based on GPS, accelerometer data, and a model of the rocket's dynamics. 
This actually worked pretty well in the second flight, and I got mostly smooth readings with little drift. The vehicle's altitude estimate, for example, was so accurate that you can see when I pick the rocket up from the ground after it lands. The lateral position data also seems accurate, with the rocket travelling significantly downrange due to the wind. There are some jagged lines here and there, which are a product of the acceleration measurements being slightly offset from what they should be. I'll try to improve this by performing accelerometer calibrations on startup, or even perhaps experimenting with live bias estimates built into the Kalman filter, but we'll see how far that goes. Overall, I'm very happy with this successful launch, and it's my first success since my TVC rocket that I made back in 2021. It's safe to say that my new one is a big upgrade. Looking back on it, I have no idea how this thing flew at all, let alone on the first try. In other news, I now have a Patreon page where you can support my projects and my videos. It's linked in the video description. I'm also putting up my CAD files and circuit board designs, so consider checking it out if you're interested. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you after the next flight.